There are a lot of things that could terrify a human. Like for example, an airplane free falling from the sky. Or you're driving a car downhill and your brakes stop working. These are all terrifying. But more terrifying than these two is being inside a submarine that's free falling to the bottom of the ocean. The people that are in the submarine that's free falling to the bottom of the ocean pretty much know that they are screwed because the lower they go, the higher the water pressure gets and that means more pressure on the submarine itself and the chance of implosion gets higher and higher. We are not talking about the Titan submersible, we're actually talking about a military great submarine. You have to know that any submarine that's produced in the world has a point of implosion, which is called the crush point. And that means the factory has to set a limit on where this submarine will crush in the ocean, or at what depth it will implode, or at what water pressure. Like for example, they could produce a submarine that could go as low as 2000 meters in the oceans. On the 15th of November 2017, an Argentinian Navy submarine was practicing in the ocean. The name of the submarine was ARA San Juan, but all of a sudden while practicing, it disappears and does not answer anymore. The entire Argentinian Navy was trying to find the lost submarine and then eventually 430 kilometers kilometers away from the coast of Argentina, a noise was heard or picked up by the microphones. The sound was heard five hours after losing the submarine. Before they checked out the area that the sound came from, they already presumed that it was an implosion. The sound that they picked up from ARA San Juan could show them what depth it happened in. You might think it was extremely deep, but it wasn't. It was around 388 meters. And that's interesting because that's one tenth of the way down to the Titanic wreckage. Based on the sound, the experts could presume what type of explosion this implosion created based on TNT. And the number they came up with was 5,670 kilos of TNT. The water pressure in that depth was about 570 psi. And the pressure of the water crushed this submarine at the speed of 2,400 kilometers an hour. Crushing a submarine at this speed is terrifying. There were 44 people in ARA San Juan, so they must have felt a lot of pain inside there. Do you think they suffered inside this submarine? No, they didn't even see it, let alone feel it. Whenever you get hit, it takes one tenth of a second to two seconds to actually feel the pain. The pain has to be created. The feeling has to go to your brain to process the pain and then it sends the signal back to the spot for you to feel the pain. And that's eventually when you actually start feeling it. For all this to happen, it takes time. Like when you stub your little toe on a table, since it's far away from your brain, it actually takes longer for you to feel the pain down there than somewhere close. The fastest pain you can feel is from burning yourself because you can feel burning sensation anywhere in your body in under two tenths of a second. Ooh, God damn. But the pain the 44 people that were in ARA San Juan felt needed to happen in 1 25th of a second. So the person inside the submarine needed to see this pain and then go to the brain, process the pain and send it back for you to feel it. But you have to know, the people on board, not only did they not see the crushing, they didn't even know they were crushed. They knew it was going to happen, but they didn't feel it. That's how fast these things implode. You could compare the implosion of a submarine in that deep water to something we have on Earth, a diesel engine. You might know. But gasoline and diesel is different because gasoline needs spark and diesel needs compression. And that is why an insane amount of pressure is needed inside the cylinder for diesel fuel to explode. There is so much pressure built in a cylinder of a diesel engine 
that the fuel will explode. When the amount of pressure is right in a diesel engine, it will explode in under 3 one hundredths of a second, very close to how a submarine implodes. There are a lot of diesel powered submarines and if they're nuclear powered, there are diesel generators inside and gasoline. When a submarine in that depth implodes, the inside of the submarine itself is like the cylinder of a diesel engine. The submarine has imploded. The pressure inside the cabin is so high and there are fossil fuels inside there like diesel and diesel engine. And that is why all that explodes after the implosion. So first the submarine gets crushed and then explodes. So it's like a double kill. And all this happens in under 40 milliseconds. And that is why not a single body was found in ARA San Juan because they were crushed and then exploded. So there was nothing to recover. When you look at submarine, the dangers of this machine is much more than a fighter plane in World War II. The crew inside a submarine has to always be ready to escape this machine. Kind of like a fighter pilot when they have to pull the chute in an emergency. But escaping for these guys is much more difficult and complicated. First of all, they can only do this at a depth of 180 meters, no deeper. Because if they do, they will be crushed by the water alone. And at this depth, they have to have special suits so they don't get crushed by the water pressure there. And that's complicated itself. There's an interesting story about something like this. In the year 1939, the US Navy had a submarine out for practice called the USS Squalus. They were only at a depth of 18 meter and all of a sudden there is a problem and the ocean water enters the submarine itself and floods out the engine room. When the water enters the submarine, all that weight pushes the submarine to the bottom of the ocean. The engine room had shut down so they couldn't do anything about it. Fortunately, it was not a deep part of the Atlantic Ocean and the bottom of the ocean in this area was only 74 meters down. USS Squalus goes to the bottom of the ocean and the crew stays down there for 48 hours. You might ask why didn't they contact anyone else? Because everything was disconnected and not working. Submarines back then and today have a device that they can let go and then it goes all the way to the top and it's called a buoy. On top of the buoy back then, there was actually a telephone that connected to the submarine all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. So any ship that passes by and they see this indicator, they can pick up the phone and talk to the submarine. Just like we said, USS Squalus was exercising. So the whole time, its sister ship was looking for it. USS Swallow. So ever since USS Squalus was lost at sea, this ship and the whole navy was pretty much looking for it. USS Swallow finds the buoy and they pick up the phone to contact the submarine. And they actually hear each other and pick up the phone. And whenever they exchanged a few words, the line gets snapped and connection gets lost. But USS Swallow had found the submarine, so they knew exactly what to do. The captain called for a barrel type vehicle that's meant for saving the crew of a submarine. This was the first time that this type of submarine was used. They called it a submarine, but it really wasn't. It was just a giant piece of metal that looked like a barrel that would be sent down with one person. One person goes inside this barrel and they let it down with a cable. The way this barrel worked was that it went to the hatch of the submarine itself and locked itself in place and let out all the water. It was kind of like a dead end screw. It took 72 hours for the crew to finally realize that they are being saved. Each time they could take seven people. The barrel went down there for five times and saved 33 men. This was the first and last time that a crew of a submarine was saved by this method. After this, it never happened again. 
You could say the crew of USS Squalus was extremely lucky to be alive. And the main thing to think was the depth of the ocean in that area and it was only 74 meters. And the USS Swallow actually found their buoy. A lot of terrible things have happened in the depths of the ocean and most of them resulted in a lot of deaths. And the most recent one was the Titan Submersible, which we've made a video on.